as Lord Benjen II Karstark, encouraged by his homesick wife Arya Stark, finally made his move on Lord Varys of Winterfell, King Renly organized a great tournament in King's Landing. It was the first major gathering of Renly's vassals since the King's coronation 13 years ago, and many took advantage of the opportunity to petition the King for their various woes. To Renly's credit, he dealt with most of these petitions fairly, though he was quite dismissive of many of these smaller lords' requests, and according to tradition asked one of them, which one of the three, my lord, cheating wife, bullying or banditry? Particularly remarkable was the trial of the Queen herself. After the death of her father and older brother, Lady Marjorie had not been seen in public often. She had grown insolent, even violent, and there was talk of madness. Still, Renly's court was shocked when Sir Edric Grafton of Gulltown accused the king of murder, and even more shocked when Renly ordered the arrest of his wife, who was pregnant at the time. After some months in house arrest, Lady Marjorie demanded trial by combat, asking her brother Garland Tyrell, known as the Gallant, to be a champion. Renly was surprised, as he would have most likely released his wife had it come to a regular trial, but could not say no to such a public request. Garland the Gallant was pitted against Kingsguard member Sir Archibald Ironwood, the big man, and despite nearly a foot difference in height between the two men, the Tyrell Knight was able to defeat Renly's mountain. Renly, relieved that the gods had judged Marjorie innocent, released his wife the next day. Another famous trial was that of Lady Brienne of Tarth, accused of murdering a Tyrell. Despite Lady Brienne being found guilty by Hand of the King Sir Olimar, the verdict was not uncontroversial, and after a visit to her cell and a hefty sum of gold from the Lord of Tarth, Renly was convinced of Lady Brienne's innocence, granting her a royal pardon. The murder trial of Lord Jaime Lannister, at the behest of Oberyn Martell, also caught many eyes in the capital. Despite having lost a hand, Lord Jaime, mad as he was by this point, demanded trial by combat, but Renly refused. After a regular trial conducted by the Lord Hand, Sir Jaime was found guilty and sentenced to the Wall, in the footsteps of his late brother Tyrion. The tourney of King's Landing itself was won by Sir Robar Royce, after an epic joust with the Knight of Flowers, Loris Tyrell, and another one with famous northern warrior Roderick Forrester. Both jousts are remembered in song by the Bards of King's Landing. An almost equally grand tourney was held the following year, hosted by Lord Edric Shield of Casterly Rock. The tourney ended with a duel between the brothers Dennis Plum and Harwin Hearthstone Plum, the latter being declared the winner. While the southerners were busy fighting their tourneys, Lord Benjen II Karstark had finally been able to oust Lord Varys from his wife's ancestral home of Winterfell, soon returning it to its lost status as the North's capital. Varys the eunuch was banished to the Wall, where he spent his remaining years writing a famous historical work about the reigns of Kings Robert and Joffrey Baratheon and the War of the Five Kings. This extensive semi-autobiography, called For the Good of the Realm, remains an invaluable source for maesters to this day. The work contains not only Varys' own insider perspective as a member of the small council for both kings, but also many additions by Stannis Baratheon, King Renly's brother, who had been a member of the Night's Watch for 15 years when Varys joined. There is also a remarkable level of detail on Aegon the Mummer's Dragon, and the book is essentially the only reliable source for much of the young man's life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to JJO Gaming. And welcome back to your boy, Renly, the beautiful of the Iron Throne. <laughs> and like I said probably last time, he's not really that beautiful anymore. And neither is my queen, McQueen. She's McQueen. Queen Marjorie of the Iron Throne. She's also not that beautiful anymore. <laughs> Depressed, lunatic, hard diet, wrathful. All right. Well, last episode we had uh, some great tourneys. Uh, we'll see what this episode brings. I'm going to warn you guys in advance. Um, it was a great, it was, it was, it was a great weather out uh, out here in in the Netherlands. So um, I had a couple of uh, what, what's happened. I write, I write to express my consternation at the fact Sir Olimar enjoys command of your armies. Does he? I don't want him to be uh, my commander, to be honest. Let's relieve him of that. Uh, you make a good point. Edric Storm gains the title commander. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, so I'm going to warn you guys in advance. It was nice weather. I ran into some neighbors uh, in front of my house and had a couple of uh, 
couple of drinks. <laughs> so, uh, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm not going to gloss over this. Lord Varys was beheaded on the orders of Lord Utherides of the Trident. Utherides the Careless of the Trident Coldwell. The Lord of the Trident. My man, what have you done? He has killed Varys. I, I saw that. I saw that. I didn't miss that. Where is he? Where's my boy? Here he is. Varys, is. Varys the Suspicious has been killed. Oh my god. So that probably means... Oh, we already knew that actually, because... Uh, uh, our boy, Lord Paramount Benjamin II of Stark. Benjamin II of Stark. Benjamin II of the North, Car Stark. The uh, husband of uh, Arya Stark. He captured uh, Winterfell last episode. So the, the the kings of the North are back in Winterfell. Back in the Great Castle of Winterfell. Oh, and by the way, um, I don't know if I recommended this before, but there's a pretty good episode, pretty, pretty good uh, video by Shadowversity on Winterfell. He sort of uh, rebuilds it based on what he reads in the books. Uh, and in the books it says, for example, that uh, the, the the God's Wood of Winterfell, probably that's this one, yeah, God's Wood of Winterwood, I, I think it's probably this one. Um, he reads in the books that that's like a few acres uh, and it's completely surrounded by the walls of Winterfell. So based on that he continues on and Winterfell in the books is a massive castle, like completely unrealistically huge but uh he anyway he tries to build it uh, uh, as well as he can i will link you guys that video it's pretty great it's uh it's a long tour of uh, of this old castle that he built in like uh, i think it's ketchup or something and uh, he just goes through it and uh you know uh, he, he sort of quotes what he what he based the castle on and it's ridiculous like the show does not do it justice at all <laughs> like it's huge it's like uh, larger than any castle in the world you know in the world we live in uh but anyway um yep let's continue on yeah like i said uh, I, I had a drink with my neighbors it was it was fun i uh in, in summer i talk with them a lot more than in winter we live in a very nice walkable neighborhood and uh, especially when it's summer i see some of them sitting outside and we have a chat a former Roynar diplomat has approached me offering to tutor my ward for tutor my ward for a price 50 gold mm, yeah sure eric we can have you be tutored by i guess it's this guy yeah Roynar. Mother Roin. He is uh, training my uh, my bastard son. That's fine, I guess. I've noticed that my brother Stannis and my lord, my son, Lord Paramount Robert, are not on the best of terms. It's a situation I hope to remedy. I've invited them both for some quality time in the Red Keep. Okay, Stannis is coming down from the wall to spend some time with my uh, my son, Robert II. All right, sure. Oh, he didn't, he didn't like it. Nope. I mean, makes sense, I guess. <laughs> Stannis really hates me still. Yeah, rival. Chosen by R'hllor. Minus 15. <laughs> okay. Alright, I'm just thinking about what we're going to do this episode. We are probably going to... Queen Nera Stormborn has uh, declared Mirini's Tirashi War of Emancipation. Okay, she's really going through everything. Did, did she win the war against... Um, against Myr? Elise and Tyrosh? She's going now. I think Myr, did she win that? Um, well, there's no truth timer here. Maybe at Daenerys' uh, side. Uh, da -da -da, this one, I guess. Yeah, Miranese, Mirage War of em Emancipation. White Peace, okay. So the uh, slavery is still present in uh, in Myrrh. But maybe she will do better in uh, Lys and uh, Tyrosh. She's still not going to Westeros, which... Uh, she does have the ambition to gain the Iron Throne. But I guess she doesn't dare attack me. I mean, it makes, it ma it makes some sense. She doesn't have that many troops. If she's fully restacked, she has about 20k. When I'm fully restacked, I have like, yeah, <laughs> 140k. So I, I can imagine she doesn't want to attack me straight away. Maybe she will wait for uh, for a, um, what's that called? A war of... Oh, did Jamie Lannister die? My rival, Jamie Lannister, died clutching at his heart. Wow. <laughs> what a way to go, Jamie. Jamie the Kingslayer. He became old. Um... When, when, when was he born? I guess that's, that's not shown really anywhere. But he, he died just when he got to old age. <laughs> so his, his portrait is very old. <laughs> and he died of, uh, of a heart attack. Wow. I mean, it's not a great way to go, man. It's not a great way to go. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> let's uh, let's help out uh, our boy, Jean. Jean Snoor. You know nothing, Jean Snoor. 
uh, Theon. Yeah, Theon can join. Theon can uh, can do it again, right? He uh, he did it the uh, the last time. Uh, we can help. Uh, we can help out the watch. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm not quite sure what uh, what the next move is going to be in this campaign. I, I I do have the ambition to obtain Valyrian steel, so I hope we will get that event at uh, at some point. Robin Aaron wants to join. Wants to marry Bionel Swan. No, no, no. Robin, we want to marry you to our daughter. Well, our daughter, our daughter is already married, I think. Our second daughter, maybe. Yeah, she's betrothed to but Paramount Robin of the Trident. We have a younger daughter, Justicia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we named her um, after the trial that uh, Marjorie underwent, which uh, she passed. Although, I mean, she's not. She, she's still not very happy. Um, Justicia is age one, so now we're not going to be throwing her to Robin. He's like age age twenty something, right? Engines of War removed from the treasury. Okay, Devos, Devos Seaworth. I don't, I don't know if I get a vote, but I. <laughs> not sure I get a vote, but I. Where is he? Where, where's Mr. Devos? Mr. Devos Seaworth. Oh, we can just look, uh, look here, right? Here he is. The, that's in the final episode, right? He says, "I don't know if I get a vote, but I." It's the most ridiculous fucking scene in all of season eight, and I. I gotta be honest with you guys. I never watched the last episode of uh, of Game of Thrones. I never watched the the last episode uh, because I, I couldn't bear myself to do it. Because <laughs> uh, you know, I I, I I read some of the reviews and I was like, okay, all the whole of season eight has been terrible. Pretty much the whole of season seven has been terrible. Like ninety percent of season six has been terrible. So I'm done with this show, and I <laughs> I couldn't deal with it, you know. Uh, my wife Marjorie has complained about me being absent so often. Uh, and so when I found that I had some extra gold to spend, I decided to buy something nice. Okay, great. Um, yeah, this bracelet. Or this one. A cameo of myself, perhaps. Sure. Benjamin II Karstark has tried to have Lord Howland Reed of the Neck arrested. Hmm. Okay. Why is that? What, what did he do? see what happens let's uh, let's make him a special interest character actually um Highland Reed is a big character in the books uh, not so much in the show I, I, I think he's not yeah he's, he's in like one scene I think he's in the Tower of Joy scene uh, he stabbed someone in the back oh uh Herrick Waters trained get the trade uh trained fighter okay great great Herrick you are you're doing pretty well you're already a trained fighter at age nine that's uh as good as me <laughs> so you uh, you could hold your own in a duel against me a 40 year old uh, man Lord Merrick Messi is complaining about his dark cell uh, I don't even remember uh, imprisoning this guy to be honest yeah you can uh, you can be in house arrest that's fine and you pay for your ransom my man nope okay now we'll keep you in until you can uh, my wife is asking again if I had an affair with Lord Loris and I, uh, I I do but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break up with him Screw you, Marjorie. <laughs> you want to become my master of whispers? We can, we can do that, I guess. We can do that, I guess. We have to replace Prince Doran. Uh, do I care? Nah. Nah. Um. Oh, why is this not sorted? Oh, this master of coin. Sorry. Uh, Lothar the Lame is my master of whispers, but he's he's pretty great. We're not going to replace him with Marjorie. This guy's much better. He's been our leal and able servant for quite a while. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. What happened? Did he win? Oh, man. I, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. I was just uh, talking uh, talking and not paying attention to this war. I guess Man's Raider won, won the war <laughs> against the wall. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What, what, the, what the hell? He seriously won? I guess he captured Jon Snow or something. Let's uh, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he got lucky. He captured Jon Snow. I guess in a battle or something. I, I I don't think he he won the siege, right? I would have noticed that. Wow. Imprisoned by man's tall talker. Wow. Okay. <laughs> My lord, we have reports from the far north of Westeros that the wall has fallen to the wildlings. They attacked the wall in great numbers and have overwhelmed the defense of the Night's Watch. Lord Commander Jon Snow has taken the survivors south and is trying to galvanize a counterattack. 
Yes. Okay, we're definitely gonna do that. <laughs> okay, long claw was removed. We have a new Lord Commander on the wall. This guy is probably a wildling. No, I guess not. Lynn Corbray. I, did, I didn't know he was at the wall. He is an actual character in the books, I think. I think he's like a like a steward or something. I'll have a look at the uh, at the wiki. Knight from House Corbray. He builds Valyrian steel. Uh, thin man, handsome vein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He likes boys. He's a gay, I guess. <laughs> Uh, he won his knighthood during Robert uh, Robert's Rebellion. Oh, he's a, he's a Targaryen loyalist. Yeah, I think so. One of Lady Lysa Aaron's suitors. Okay. Following Bronn. Bronn's victory in the trial. He escorts uh, them to the bloody gate. Okay, he's a villain. He's a villain. And he's a sort of a, a, a Peter Baelish uh, guy. Peter, Peter Baelish uh, uh, accomplice, let's say. All right. Well... Um, <laughs> I didn't expect that. I didn't expect, uh... Ah! Okay, I guess the wall has to wait, because this is the Valyrian Steel event. Uh, my... something came to me today. A bit annoyed and tired. Your Grace, there's an old man in the courtyard claiming he has to speak with you. <laughs> I still cannot do a northern accent, eh? I still cannot do it. I guess you just, you guys just gonna have to accept that uh, I'm gonna read this with a Dutch accent. Your Grace, there is an old man in the courtyard. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, that's a Dutch accent. The Dutch accent. Uh, but I'm going to read it just in my own accent. There's an old man in the courtyard claiming he has to speak with you. He claims you have something you'd pay a great sum of money for. The old man seems to, to me to be a lunatic, but... Dot, dot, dot. Well, he claimed he had a map. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> and an old map of Valyria where great treasures are hidden, yes. Yes, come over here, my uh, my old buddy. The beginning of a story. Before you stands an old haggard man in his 50s. Maybe 60s. He doesn't look Westerosi, nor does he look like a beggar. Intrigued, you asked him, asked him about the map. The old man, intrigued, you asked him about the map. This should be a comma, guys. This should not be a, a period. The old man gave a smile the seven would be afraid of. Your grace, it has come to my attention that you are looking for a way... To acquire a Valyrian steel weapon. <laughs> this is only two E's, guys. As it happens, I have a map in my possession that may help you with your ambition. But before we continue, may I ask for an alcoholic refreshment? Your septon, obviously annoyed, quickly asks, why do you need alcohol? The old man looks a bit down at his feet, waits a few seconds and refocuses back on you. Well, my lord, because no great story ever started with something eating, someone eating a salad. Yeah, uh, what's that from? That is that is pr a pretty famous quote. Okay, I will, I will look it up uh, when I'm uh, editing this episode. Um, but I, I think that might be like a Churchill or a sort of a wrongly, like a apocryphal quote by Churchill or something. Like, no great story ever started with someone eating eating salad. You have my you had my curiosity, but now you have my full attention. Thanks, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> the old man tells you he's certain about the location of the Valyrian steel you seek. He points to it on the map and appears convinced. No doubt the journey there will be long, arduous and very dangerous. Put purchasing this map and following it could yield great reward. This should be a B. Uh, yes, definitely. I'm going to buy that map. I'm going to get some Valyrian steel. Whilst preparing for the journey, your septum just suggests you should take someone with you on, the, on this journey. Your grace, I've assembled a group of people who are at the top of their respective fields and would be suitable to accompany you on your quest. The Great Warrior, the Sailor and Navigator, the Handsome Lad, the Old Man shall come with me. Um, I mean... Hmm. So on the only one hand, I think Renly would probably go with the Handsome Lad. <laughs> on the other hand, maybe not. I mean, he is pretty loyal to, uh, to Loras. I don't think he's had that many other uh, lovers in the meantime. Uh... And if he thinks ration rationally, I think he would probably go with a, with a great sailor. Or a great warrior, because Lorendia is not a great warrior. I think a great warrior is probably a good idea. A soldier named Feshbinder appears at the court. Okay, let's do that one. Let's do that one. Uh, the largest warship we have. 400 gold, jeez. Fine. <laughs> Fine, whatever. <laughs> We're going to have to reconquer the wall later, guys. Assembles born to Sir Olimar and Alara. Great. Giles. Giles. Something. <laughs> Olimar doesn't have a uh, noble title yet. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't asked for one. So I'm not going to give him one. <laughs> if he asks for one, I will definitely give him one. 
Unless I'm broke. But Paramount is declared Northern Watch. Restore the Night's Watch on King Man's Tall Talker. Okay, great. Good going, uh, Lord Benjen. You can uh, you can fight this war for me. <laughs> I feel like I've missed something. I feel like I've I've let Mage Ma Man's Raider siege the uh, the Castle Black. But you know, whatever. <laughs> we'll we'll get it back, guys. Right? I mean, Man's Raider. He certainly has tried often enough. <laughs> He's tried like 10 times to conquer the wall. And we, we defeated him every time. But I guess this time he uh, he succeeded. Uh, good bit numbers. Just the very essentials, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we're basically broke. <laughs> we don't have anything to spend on this uh, this poor kid. We spent 400 gold on, uh, <laughs> on a ship. Franklin Tyrell died under suspicious circumstances. Okay, he's the son of Garland the Gallant. Who is the Lord of Reach? Uh, no, who is Lord of Reach right now? Oh, this is Eustace, right. Eustace. So my brother-in-law, Garland, Garland, the, the Gallant, is the heir to the Reach. And his son died under suspicious circumstances. Okay, interesting. Some court intrigue going on there. Maybe maybe Marjorie is doing it. Because if, 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 she, if she kills her brother... And her nephew, then she becomes the new uh, Lady of the Reach. Once uh, Eustace, uh, Eustace dies. Marjorie is pregnant, great. <laughs> we have plenty of kids already, but we can always use another one, right? People of King's Landing can no longer work the fields. It's getting colder and colder. Mild winter. Okay. Fine. We should be okay, I think. Winter is coming to an end. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was quick. The ship is docked and fully loaded. Is docked, fully loaded, and crewed, ready to depart on our quest. Fresh binder is alongside you on the bridge as you give the command to cast off. Okay, this guy. Yeah, he is a pretty good warrior. Strong, skilled, strong, uh, strong guy, skilled fighter. Yeah, he, uh, he can be useful. I make a joke about naval life. I never really got this one. <laughs> I make a joke about naval life. I don't know what kind of joke that would be, but fine. Uh, Olimar is my regent. Fine. My hand of the king. I think he will do a fine job once we're away. Uh, while we're away in Valyria, your son Prince Loris is responding well to my tuition. Okay, great. That's uh, lucky because yeah, <laughs> barely educated. We didn't really treat him well. Would be great if this guy turns out very well because we barely spent any money on him. Dangerous factions. Dangerous factions. Wow, ninety-eight percent. Wait, what? Lord Paramount, Edric for the Iron Throne. Doran is joining joining him. Edric Benjen is joining him. He's 72. He likes me he likes me very much. And then Robin is joining him. Why are you guys What are you guys even doing? Can we give him maybe an honorary title or something? Lord Paramount Edric, what 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 the hell are you doing, man? We gave you that We gave you that uh, that high lordship, man. Make him a small council advisor, that's fine. After many weeks sailing the sea, you are going bored. Perhaps something can be done with Fesh Binder to pass the time. We can have a duel for training. Or I can read a book. Well, let's have a duel, fine. But he will he will definitely beat me, but <laughs> my mistake is all you, is all you get. I quickly avoided this forceful attack. Uh it's all over now. I defeated him, really. I accept, yeah. Victory is mine. I won that duel, really. <laughs> Happy with quest, 20% chance of getting a trade skilled fighter. Okay, it didn't work. Too bad. But this, this faction, man, they might actually declare war on me. You guys, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Doran, I guess I get. Benjen, okay, fine. Robin, I already have uh, trouble with, but Edric himself, we gave him all that land. Give him everything. Don't, don't, don't be, don't be doing me like that, bro. I went for a tribal combat. Lord Howland Reed demanded the tribal combat from his captain, Lord Paramount Benjamin Karstark. He proved his innocence by slaying his opponent, Darren. Okay, Howland Reed defeated this guy. Makes sense. Howland Reed is great, right? Yeah, he's a formidable fighter. So that makes sense. Fine, great. Howland Reed is released again. I wonder how our Valyrian crest is going. Winter is coming to an end. There was a very short winter. Just wonder what's happening here in the uh, in the wall. Okay, I think uh, Men's Raider is being defeated as we speak. 
Yeah, 92%. Definitely. The stopover. After many weeks sailing, we have finally crossed the summer sea and arrived in the port in port at Volantis to take on supplies. This is when you tell the men you intend to sail into the smoking sea in search of Valeria, as the old man's map instructs you to do. Many balk at this and desert, but others, including the trusty Fashbinder, remain loyal. More worthy men willing to take the risk can be hired anyway. To pass the time, whilst the ship is resupplied, you and Fashbinder visit the local tavern. The atmosphere is raucous and friendly. But a group of hardened looking sailors, clearly oblivious to of your rank and status, take a disliking to Fashbinder. They are throwing insults at him and slighting his honor. They left now, but an accident will befall them. I have just a witty bit of advice. Yeah, that sounds like Renly, right? He would just make some kind of sarcastic quip. Ship has set sail again, bound for the smoking sea. This sea was created from the shattered remains of Valeria after the doom, and is now filled with volcanoes and smoking stacks of rock. The men are apprehensive. Some say it boils in places and is haunted by demons. Nah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. The sea was calm and no dangers had been encountered, lulling us into a false sense of safety. This calm was broken when a huge kraken attacked the ship. It was thought they were just a myth, but this monstrous giant squid <laughs> is very real. It's wrapping its tentacles around the ship, furiously trying to pull ship and crew to the bottom of the sea. To arms! 90% chance of the kraken is slain. 10% chance of the kraken devours our long ships. Wow, we're being attacked by a literal Kraken. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys should play... Um, it's a game by Lucas Pope, the guy who created the uh, Papers, Please game. Yeah, you guys should be play Return of Obra Din. That's great. I don't want to spoil anything, but, you know, I already did. Because I said the word Kraken. <laughs> Two arms. Okay, we won. Okay, great. Great, 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 great. 5% chance was maimed and severely injured. 85% chance of no effect. Okay, that should be fine, I hope. The Kraken pulled many of the men into the sea to their death, but our attack managed to free the ship from its grasp and scare it off. Thank the gods. Wounded. Okay, that's fine, I guess. That's fine. We have a good uh, warrior with us, right? The ship has navigated the Smoky Sea intact with not too many losses and finally makes land on the broken Valyrian mainland. I don't think that this has ever happened to me. Usually the ship uh, the ship uh, is lost, but I guess this time not. And usually I hire a, a, a sailor too. <laughs> Even then it's always lost. But this time I guess not. I guess we were lucky. Uh, the land starts with sheer cliffs many hundreds of feet high, with seemingly no visible way to reach the platform above. These cliffs were no doubt formed where the peninsula was wrought asunder. Wrought asunder. There's some great theories about um, about the doom of Valeria. That, 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 that's what this is referring to. So this is the peninsula of Valeria. <laughs> And uh, this is not in the show, really. Uh, it is in the show, but it's kind of done dirty there. You know, you forget about it very soon, even though it's a very memorable place in the books. And it happened uh, a couple of hundred years ago, like 500 years ago or something. Um, the Valerians ruled, like most of Essos. And then something happened here in Valeria, which caused everything to be destroyed. And there's got some great theories about it. Some say the faceless men in Bravos did it. You know, and there's, uh, there's like talk of a comet and... Uh, volcanic eruption and stuff like that. Um, and then the Valyrians were lost, and uh, the last of the Valyrians were over here on Dragonstone, and they ended up conquering the uh, the whole Iron Throne. That's Aegon the Conqueror. Uh, he's not here. Let's have a, have a look where he is. History. Bleep. This guy, Aegon the Conqueror. So it's about uh, 300 something years ago. Alright, anyway, uh, we're going to focus on getting this Valyrian steel sword, right? Ship has navigated the Smoky Sea intact with not too many losses and finally makes land on the broken Valyrian mainland. Yada yada yada. Uh, we must scale up directly no matter the danger. It may take longer, but we must scout a safe way up. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter that much, I think. This is 90% chance of success. This is 96% uh, chance of, uh, of success, I think. Uh, we'll go directly up. Why not? Hashtag YOLO. Cliffs has been safely scaled. There were some uh, moments where you almost slipped, but your grip held firm. Now you have reached the mainland of the Freehold, and it's time to trek across the charred and ruined landscape of Old Valeria itself. Yeah, onwards. Great, it worked. It was only 45% chance, and, and it worked. Oh, Sir Devos died. Oh man, Sir Devos. He's great. He's one of my favorite characters of the uh, early seasons. Within the last season, he has nothing to do, but that's like most of the. <laughs> Most of my favorite characters have nothing to do in the last few seasons. Um, old Valyria. After many days of traveling in the 
arrow straight Valyrian roads, we have finally arrived in Old Valyria. You walk in on in you walk on in an odd silence as you survey the ruins of this long dead city of wonderment. The fabled toppled towers topless towers lay ruined and scorched, and great rents can be seen in the earth. Rents that have swallowed majestic palaces and sprawling temples. Truly this proud city must have been a sight to behold at its peak before the doom. To this day no one knows what caused the doom. Most say that it was a natural cataclysm. A catastrophic explosion caused by the eruption of all 14 flames. Yeah, it's built around a bunch of uh, volcanoes. So I think um, the whole story of Valyria is kind of based on the Yellowstone uh, event that that, that, that that the people predict will happen in uh, in a few million years. The uh, the area underneath Yellowstone National Park in the uh, U.S. will explode, and there will be like a new ice age and whatever. Uh, but you know that, that that's the fun thing about Game of Thrones. You never really know if something is magic or just a natural event. Um, it's really this price that you must have been inside to behold. And to this day, no one knows what, what caused it. Doing most say that it was a natural cataclysm and a catastrophic eruption. A handful of maces hold that Valyria had used spells to tame the fourteen flames for thousands of years, and that their hunger for slaves and wealth was as much to sustain these spells as to expand their power. And that when those last stu spells faltered, the cataclysm became inevitable. All right. The nearest Targaryen is that Drogon dragon egg removed. Okay. Who did she give it to? She got a hey. She's married to King Tito's Lannister. <laughs> okay. Matrilineal. Yeah. Okay. She married a Lannister guy. Tito's. Didn't we? Um. Didn't we? Didn't we banish his guy to the court of uh, Daenerys? No, I think that, that was a different Lannister, right? We banished a Lannister to uh, to the to the court of Danny. It might have been this guy actually. So I guess she, I guess she decided to marry him, <laughs> and she got she even got a kid with uh, with him, even though he was captured. He's, she's I guess fighting a war. Yeah, she's fighting two wars. I guess someone captured her husband. She still does have a kid though, Aenar of Marine, Aenar Targaryen, with golden hair like the like the Lannisters. Okay. Interesting, interesting. There's not, there's not theory in this time. It's a different Lannister. that's joining Daenerys. Fine. We have other things to do. We are pretty close to Daenerys, actually. After exploring the ruins, of the ruins of the city, we have located the palace marked on the old man's map. This palace is one of the grandest in the city, cascading many feet into the air and adorned with adorned with uh, Valyrian sphinxes made of fused black stone. Yeah, the famous fused black stone. <laughs> okay, I, I'm not gonna explain all that lore, but. There, there's some lore in that. There's some, some sort of uh, Lovecraftian uh, theories about the uh, the Black Stone. Um, re remarkably, it seems mostly intact. You and Freshbinder enter the palace to seek out its treasure. Okay, here we shall find our prize. Now it's going to be uh, dangerous. The map leads you into a chamber at the heart of the palace. A door of fused black stone swings shut and traps you in. Four arches stand before you, under which all of them is flame. Under which all of them is flame of different colors. Clearly, this is the start of some sort of labyrinth designed to keep out unwanted intruders. Okay. Red, green, blue, black. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I, I think the, the Targaryen colors are red and black. I think it makes sense to have those two at least. So let's let's go to the red first. Nope. Okay, maybe, though. The jets of red-hot flame and clouds of ash attack you from all directions as you proceed into the next cavern. The only visible safe place is a large well at the center of the room, uh, which both you and Freshbinder try to leap into. Okay, 98% chance of you fall down the trap door. All right. You land with an awkward bump back in the chamber with the black door and the archways of fire. It would seem there's only one route out of this labyrinth, but it's a black door, so let's go for the black fire then. You enter what seems to be a crypt. In the middle of this circular room is a grand tomb a to a to adorned with the likeness of a long dead Valyrian dragon lord, surrounded by dragons of black stone. Okay, what is happening, guys? Arrayed around this central tomb are four other tombs with statues above them, each with staircases leading behind them. The beautiful woman, the young warrior, the little girl, the old man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the middle of this circular room is a grand tomb adorned with the likeness of a long dead Valyrian dragon lord. Surrounded by dragons of black stone. Alright, around the center tomb are four other tombs with statues above them. Okay, wh what do we do, guys? 
Let's do the young warrior. I, I, I don't know. Old man. I mean, old man makes the most sense, right? Because it's a crypt. I don't know if, that, if this has, any, has, any, has anything to do with anything or if this is just a random thing. But if it's a crypt, it's most likely an old man that died, right? You proceed down onto a star dark spiral staircase, but as you and Feshbinder descend the steps together, the steps slide together to form a steep slide. Okay. You end with an awkward bump back in the chain with the black door. Okay, let's go to the black door again. Uh, let's go for the young warrior. Nope. Black fire. Uh, beautiful woman. Nope. Black fire. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Little girl then, I guess. Yes, okay. After walking through many winding corridors, am I already severely injured? No, just wounded. After walking through many winding corridors, you enter, enter a chamber lit by dim torches. The ceiling is a large dome adorned with a map of the freehold at its height. Next to the four marked colonies of Valeria on this map is a door of black Valerian stone. Next to the four marked colonies of Valeria on this map is a door of black Valerian stone. Okay. I'll take the door behind Mantaris, Tyria, Volantis, Dragonstone. Dragonstone, I guess, right? Nope. <laughs> uh, Blackfire, uh, Little Girl, um, Volantis. Yep, okay. <laughs> you reach, I guess this is just trial and error, because uh, I don't really know what the logic behind all this is. You reach was mu what must be, you reach must what be an inner court, large courtyard of the palace. Here is where must have been once a beautiful garden. Come on, come on, guys. <laughs> Proofread these things, man. For there are charred remnants of many trees. There are no obvious exits, although at each corner there are dragon skulls. Uh, each has a depiction of a dragon above it, and each must be must have been bigger than even Balerion the Black Dead. Come on, must have been, guys. <laughs> Come on, man. Um, all the skulls have their jaw wide open. Uh, black dragon, right? Nope. Okay, this is gonna this is getting dangerous. You have six percent chance of dying. Black fire, little girl. Uh, Volantis. Golden dragon? Sure. Okay, great. After blindly groping through the darkness, you eventually reach what must be the throne room. The throne is charred and twisted metal, the drapes and windows long rotted and smashed. <coughs> Behind the throne are four doors, above which are murals of people defeated and enslaved by the Freehold. Andals, Kiskari, Roinar, Sarnori. Okay, we went to Volantis. I think Volantis is uh, ruled by the Guscari. I used to be ruled by the Giscari. Did it? Or is this the Roin? Ah, it could be both, I guess. Let's try the Roinar. Nope. Don't die, please. Thank you. Blackfire. Little girl. Volantis. Uh, oh, uh, what was it? Golden Dragon, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, did we try the Roinar just now? Let's try this, this Giscari. Uh, then, then, okay, no. Uh, Blackfire, Little Girl, Volantis, uh, Golden Dragon, and us. Yep, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, man. <laughs> we're st we st we've still not died. This is different from the last puzzle. I think that there was there was some sort of Skyrim-ish puzzle where you had to turn like three pillars to show like three wolves or whatever. <laughs> but this is a much more difficult one. More twisting passages you go until you reach the last room. Here is one black stone wall before which is a large bottle of mysterious blue liquid. Clearly it must be drunk. You and Freshbinder drink and the wall vanishes and four doors appear. You suffer terrible visions of dragons, wyverns and wolves attacking, however, and desperately flee to a door to escape the the te the terror, I guess. First door, second door, third door, fourth door. Uh, first door. Nope. Black fire. Little girl. What end this? Golden Dragon. Oh shit. <laughs> and us? Yeah. Second door. Nope. We're still not we're still not dead. <laughs> oh, uh the guy of Tyrush. Oh, the Great Grass Sea. Oh she's Khaleesi again. Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea. She doesn't hold Marine anymore. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> we still have to we still have to finish this 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 quest. And it's much more difficult than I thought it would be. Okay, you usurped everything. Um, Blackfire. Uh, little girl. 
Volantis, Golden Dragon, and the Oz. Okay, third door. Nope. <laughs> Blackfire, come on. <laughs> come on, guys. Uh, shit, yeah, Volantis. Oh my god. What is happening? Okay. <laughs> Daenerys is attacking me. <laughs> and I'm at Volantis finding a uh, Valyrian steel sword. <laughs> Excellent. So it's it's finally happened, I guess. Daenerys is attacking me. Oh my god. <laughs> save me, uh save me uh uh what what what's your name again? <laughs> save me uh Sir Olimar. <laughs> Everybody please join me. I'm gonna have to uh I'm gonna have to uh <laughs> to, to, to to deal with this now. Okay, Robert Tully is joining me. Uh my son Renly is joining me. Great. Okay, uh, Golden Dragon. Yeah, please honor your ob obligations, yes. And us. Okay, at least Edric Storm is joining me, even though he was in a, uh, a faction against me. He's still joining me. Robin of the Ville is joining me. Okay, great. Fourth door. It must be the fourth door, right? Yes, okay. After crashing through the door in a frenzied panic, you and Freshbinder fortunately come to rest in a large hallway. It would seem we have found the end of the labyrinth, the doors to a large vault sent before you. Before you can enter, however, Freshbinder stops you and says, Your Grace, I must have a word. Sure. Uh, I remember our duel on the boat. You're a great warrior and I have much to learn from you. Nice. Okay, we become close friends. He uh, swears his eternal loyalty to you and House of Ratheon. Great. Okay, the vault. You and Feshbinder proceed into the vault, moving aside the heavy door of made of fused black stone. Inside you see a wondrous sight. Vast piles of gold, silver and other treasures lie before you. And mounted above it all is a magnificent set of Valyrian steel armor. Ah, oh, shit, man. That's great. That's great. That's so rare. <laughs> but we got it. We got Valyrian steel armor. Oh my god. It's, it's skill armor made of smoky black steel, etched in red gold, and covered in Valyrian runes and, runes and glyphs. Such armor would be worth a kingdom's fortune. It's now time to head home with this new Valeri uh, Baratheon heirloom. The quest ends. Okay. All right. Valyrian steel armor. <sighs> Finally. Am I now back? Am I back in charge? The Iron Throne? We have to fight Daenerys. <laughs> we have to fight Daenerys Targaryen. Everybody please join me. Should I think we should be fine, because... Or maybe that's why uh, why Marine was usurped, because she's moving to... Uh, to the Iron Throne to fight us finally. 835. I, I think we should be fine. I think we should be fine. Though she does have dragons, so it's better to come with a massive, massive, uh, <laughs> a massive uh, uh, numerical superiority. So we'll just we will just gather everybody we can in King's Landing. Oh, okay. But let's wait till we're back home, and then we can uh, we can quit the episode because I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna fight Daenerys in the next episode. Am I back in, uh, in charge? No. Still not. Valyrian's two armor. Let's have a look at it, actually. Um, where is it? Many Bretons armor. Valyrian steel armor. Here we go. Let's equip that. Quality 5. Magical alloy. Invented in Valyria to make weapons of unparalleled quality. A suit of armor made of such material will be worth a kingdom's fortune. Great. Plus 5. Festival opinion. Great. Plus 20 personal combat skill. Fantastic. Okay. Alright. I'll just wait until Renly is back. Yep, we're back. Okay. Okay, a long journey with many adventures along the way. We finally arrived home in King's Landing. I am the greatest. Yes. Okay. Alright. My regency is over. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Guys, that was pretty... That was pretty intense. <laughs> but we uh, we made we made it. We, uh, we finished our quest. And uh, next episode, we're going to fight... None other. None other than everybody's favorite character. Daenerys Targaryen. McQueen. <laughs> She's not McQueen. We're going to defeat her. Definitely. 100%. <laughs> We're going to kick her ass. Okay. But we'll not do that this episode. We'll do that next episode. For now, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, if I've been slurring my words, it's because I'm mildly drunk. <laughs> you have to deal with that, I guess. Um, and I will see you next episode. Thanks for watching. And bye-bye.